Hello everyone, you are back with Mike at Workflow. Uh, right now we are wrapping up our uh, countertop installation. We, in the previous videos, we, we showed you how to uh, sand and paint cabinets, how to prep and paint cabinets from a uh, standard uh, builder's fair, builder's fair uh, kind of cabinets, which you'll find in the vast majority of cookie cutter houses which is basically builder cheap cabinets, but they turned out pretty good if I may say so myself, but I digress already. Um, so I have already in cut and installed the countertops here and on the desk over there, and I've already cut the, the butcher block for this one here, but I'm gonna leave it loose for now until we get the oven in. Why I'm gonna do that? Because I don't wanna put this countertop in Put these two countertops in and then go to put the oven in and that thing stick and and um and won't and won't go in because i don't have enough space in between the countertops so what i'm going to do i'm going to install this one i'm going to and push the oven as far to the right as i can and then i'm going to put that one in and get a nice gap on both and then i'm going to install that one after after the oven is in um now this is birch countertops here that you can buy at Home Depot. They got birch and acacia. This one is birch. And within 48 hours, you have to oil these things, otherwise they'll warp. So what I've already done is um, I've already oiled the bottom of this one. So I'm going to tell you my, my experience. I'm, a, I'm an experienced uh, licensed builder. And um, I think if you, if you have just flat spaces, then you could totally... Um, do this countertop installation yourself. However, if you've got a 90 degree turn that you've got to put in, you need to hire a professional because I had to pull out a lot of different tools in order to make this one simple 90 degree turn. Um, I guess you could butt them together, but it just ain't going to look professional if you just butt the two slabs together. So what you end up having to do is cut two perfect 45 degree angles. A long distance too, right? You can't cut this with a saw, with a table saw or anything like that, unless you've got a massive table saw. Um, which most people, unless you're a professional carpenter, a professional carpenter, you're not going to have one of those huge table saws where you can cut stuff four, six feet wide, whatever on it. Um, your your standard do-it-yourself ain't going to have that. Um, but if it's just flat surfaces like this and like this one, you could totally do that yourself. But if there's a 90 degree turn in, that's, you're gonna to need to hire an expert to do that. Otherwise, I don't think it's gonna turn out well. Now you can spend, by the time you spend all the money on all the tools that you're gonna to need to buy to cut this thing right, and you waste two or three countertops, you would have paid for a professional to do it already. If you wanna do all the other ones yourself and just hire a guy, a professional carpenter to come in and just cut this one here for you, or take it to a cabinet shop and have them do it, uh, that might be your best bet. Anyway, so I repurposed the hardware that was on the old laminate countertop to pull these pieces together. I had to use a router to router all this stuff out so I'd have space to put the hardware, right, and it'd be flush on the bottom. I cut these things perfect here, and I and I used a um, I used a Liquid Nails Extreme Heavy Duty glue. It says all weather, all season performance. This is a little more expensive. You can use the standard wood, the standard uh, liquid nails will work perfect for this, to be honest. Um, and so, uh, one of the other steps, so we'll, we'll go, we'll tell you what the steps are here in a minute. Let's just go over this countertop. Um, and when the countertop, when I had to cut the countertop, I left this in long because I didn't want to have to redo it for one. And I went and I installed it in here temporarily put it in and I moved it around until I got it where I wanted it and I'm, you need to take a, a square you want the back you want the back of this you want this this part here to be square to the wall because when you push the oven in there you want it to be it's going to be square to the wall and so you want the countertop to be square to that right and so and you want to put that put your put your square against the wall like that and I'll move it around until you got a square, a square uh, countertop here. And that's going to dictate where it's going to be at down here, basically. Um, 
Also here, after I cut this angle, I found it. Okay, this is very important actually. If you plant this yourself. So I'm going to show you how I did this, how I cut this real quick, real quick and in a hurry. Um, so when I cut this, in order to get to 45 degree, I just use, I just use the square like that, put it on there, and I got the mark that I wanted right here, and I marked it on here and on that end, and then you measure on your saw the distance, measure on your saw the distance from the blade to whatever edge you're cutting. If you're cutting from this edge to here, then the distance is shorter than this edge from here to here. But you can cut in either direction, right? You want to cut, you want to cut the piece you're cutting off. You want your the, the large section, the small section, to be on the piece you're cutting off if you can, right? When you cut it off, the piece that falls to the ground, you want the that to be on the short side. The side, the long side is going to be the side you're going to keep, and um. And I cut this thing, I cut it upside down. I cut it from the back side because I didn't want me sliding this thing down just to ruin the countertop surface. Now, the most important thing, this is where I messed up, and this is why I hope you watch these videos, is that, is that you'll learn from the mistakes that I made, okay? So this... If you'll see, this is a standard uh, 24 tooth something blade. This is not a finished blade, but it was the blade I had in stock. And I didn't think it mattered, but it does matter. You need to use a finished blade for this, and, and they're, they're usually twice as expensive. The reason why it has more teeth, it has more teeth than this one. Um, actually, that's not a 24. It's a demolition blade. It's got a lot of teeth on it. That's definitely not 24. That's way more than 24. But usual, usually these things are 24. I think it's a demolition blade and it's got more teeth on it as a result. But the problem is that the teeth are out here. The problem is that this is a flimsy blade. Like I can move it easily like this. See? Actually, you know what? Let me take the power off of it. Don't play around with the saw without the power, with the power connected to it. Uh, but this here is flimsy. You want a blade that's rigid. It'll give you a nice straight cut. What happened as I was running this through the workpiece is that it was flexing inside the wood and it was actually leaving me in, uh, a not straight cut. All right. So you want it to, the reason why I cut from the other side is because when the teeth come through, you want the teeth to, 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 to cut upward, right, in that direction. You want the teeth to cut in that direction. That way it's not chipping this thing out here on the face side, right? If you cut it from the face side, the teeth are pulling up or shooting material up like that. They're coming up out of it, like they're digging up like a like an arm like this. You want it to dig down into it like this. So you need to cut it from the back side. And you need to use a rigid, uh, a rigid saw blade. Make sure your, your blade doesn't move much whenever you're doing this. And you'll get a nice straight cut. So I did that measurement and I clamped it here and I clamped it there and I run the saw through it to get the 45 degree. That's how I've done it. Okay? Um, that's a whole other video on how to cut this, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's not easy. And then once you leave it long on this side where you got to have the oven, and then put it where you want it at, and then mark it. And then go cut this straight edge here after that. Otherwise, you might cut too much. You don't want to cut too much off. You don't want to do all of this work and then have to redo the thing. All right. So now I've already, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown on making this thing, right? And after I did that, You take mineral oil, you take mineral oil and wipe your mineral oil all over the back of it here. Um, okay, so I will tell you what I found out doing this is that I just took the mineral oil 
and just like poured it on it at first with like a squirt bottle. And um, you can see there's lines in here. I think these will go away over time. But if you put it on a rag and then, and then put it on, it works better. It won't leave these lines, these, uh, these oil lines in it. Because when you first spray this mineral oil on that fresh wood, like it soaks a lot in there. You can actually see all the squirt lines in there. So you either spread it out really quickly or put it on, just put it on a rag and put it on there. Um, now, to attachment, let's talk about attachment here. So, normally I would glue, I would, I would just use wood glue on the outside of this thing here. On the outside, just wood glue for the bond. But we're not going to do that. Why? Because I had to oil the bottom of this for one. If this was, uh, this was a surface that I didn't need to oil, then I would use the wood glue. Now that I've oiled this, I can put wood glue on this if I want to, but it's not going to stick to this thing with oil on it. Because the wood glue is, is like a water-based thing, and it needs to be able to soak in. And if you coat this thing with oil, it's not going to soak in. So we're going to use mechanical fasteners to hold the countertop in. Um, now I've already, this, one, this was an old hole that was here, and I pulled this top drawer out here. You might have to pull two drawers out. But, uh, and I went ahead and piloted the hole here. And when you choose the screw that you want to use, make sure the screw won't go all the way through the counter, the, the countertop whenever you have it installed. Okay, and you might even want to recess it in there just a little bit so it won't split that hardwood, because this is hardwood here. So you do want, you have to pilot that. Pilot it. Don't even, that's not even a, uh, that's not even an option really, because if you try to run a screw through that, it's just going to crack it wide open and you end up having to fix your cabinet. Um, so what we're going to use, we're just going to caulk it. We're going to run us a bead of caulk here and a bead of caulk in between these here to keep mice and, and insects from being able to get inside the cabinet. So I'm going to put a bead of caulk all the way around the top of this cabinet here. Because I don't want insects to be able to come in from the outside, from where you can't see them, and get in there. They can, obviously, they can come in the front, but they won't. But you'll be able to do stuff to prevent that. Um, actually, let's move this out of the way so we can caulk it. Let me see. Um, is there anything else we're missing here? Oh yeah, you got to make sure the surface is level. With a, put your level on it and make sure the level surface is level. Here, you want to put it across this way, across that way. Make sure nothing, nothing, nothing's off. Easier way to do it is to take your laser level and put your laser level up here and make sure it's it's level all the way around it. I actually highly recommend that. But the the stand that I use for my laser is the stand I'm using for the camera, so I can't put both of them on there. Um, let's see, we followed the hole, we're going to use caulk, we're all the bottom. Oh yeah, so the wood filler. So if you can see, you can actually see this joint. Because that, that blade flexed a little bit, it didn't give me a perfectly straight line there. It's, it's off like one millimeter, but that's enough to make it not look good. So um, this side I didn't put any wood filler on, but you can see that the wood glue is coming out of it here a little bit on the bottom. And also, while you got this wood glue and these fasteners all setting up, you need to have it on a flat surface. All right? And you let it set up. And I had to let it set up for about uh, 48 hours or something like that, or 24 hours. But on this side, I put the wood glue on it. I put the wood, a little bit of wood glue here. I mean, not wood glue, a uh, wood filler. I put a high quality wood filler. Uh, I used a uh, Minwax stainable wood filler here. Um, I put it here. And I put it down right on that thing and then come around and sanded it. And, I mean, you can, it really looks like a really good sand. It didn't look so hot. It didn't look so hot whenever, um, whenever I put it together with the glue. But after the glue set, I come along there and I put that wood, that wood filler in it and sanded it down with an 80 grit. I'm going to sand it with it. Let me show you what I sanded it with. Oh, it's upstairs. I just used that little 4x4 four four sander. Uh, flat sander, not an orbital sander, just the the flat one. Um, that I use the same one that I that's in the cabinet video. I use that same sander, the same little Dewalt four x four sander that I did for a use for cabinets. 
and I took 80 grit and I just sanded it. While you're, while you're hitting this with your sander, I used 80 grit and um, it didn't leave a bad finish. Actually, it was pretty freaking smooth if I made stays by myself. So, um, actually, oh God. There must be a screw or something sticking up on my table out there. It left a couple of indentations on my cabinet surface. But this is essentially bushing block. So unless you, you could, I'm going to put mineral oil on this. So technically it's just like a butcher block that you buy and you cut, well, cut your vegetables on. You can just cut them on the countertop anywhere in there. So, um, so that's all it is. But I'm just, just going to have mineral oil on it. You could literally just cut your vegetables on that. So if you do that directly though, you're going to get like divots and stuff in it. But it's wood. So all you got to do is sand it and refinish it with oil. I mean, it's really... Really, you can repair as easy as you can damage it. You can repair it, and honestly, I think that would give it great character if you just didn't didn't really fix a lot of that stuff unless it looks really bad. But some of that stuff you can fix with just putty. If it's a deep, if it's like a like a screw hole in it, you can just put some putty, wood putty, or something like that in it. You don't even have to use um, uh, wood filler. But I do like the way this wood filler probably gives you the best final finish. Put the wood filler on it, let it sit the amount of time it says on here. And then sand it with like an 80 grit um, and then oil it and it'll look great. I mean, this, this will give you a, if you oil them, I think you have to oil these things once a month or once every, or like three to four times a year or something like that. And so all you do is you just clean it, clean it, get the, the nasty stuff off of it and then clean it with the mineral oil on a rag. So all you need is a rag and mineral oil for maintenance on these things. All right. So, um, Let's go ahead and install this countertop. All right, let's go put this outside. I'm sitting on the back side. All right, I've already leveled this thing out, so we just got to install it. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a screw here at the front of this corner. A screw here. And there's a, somebody put a stud in back here. I'm gonna run a screw back in that back corner behind where the backsplash is gonna hide it. And I'm probably gonna put one up here in this corner here somewhere. Here over here or right, probably right there somewhere. Um, let's go ahead and caulk it. I'm using Alex Fast Dry uh, Caulk. This is for paint projects. This is. It's just molded purpose. It's just it dries quick. It just works great, and most people use it for. Um, oops. What in the world? This thing's easy. Man. Don't cut too huge unless unless you really need to get a lot of this caulk out at one time. You don't want to cut a big hole about an eighth, a couple millimeters wide. I don't know if you can see that. You want to be able to put a nail or something in it to, to close it off. Or use this handy dandy little uh, caulk plug thing here. I like these actually. All right, now we don't want in, we don't want pests to get into this cabinet, and I've already in a previous video I told you about doing the pest block. So I expended a whole can of pest block and all, the, especially at the, the mud seal down there where the sheetrock 
goes to the bottom behind the cabinets, you need to pest block that whole thing around the bottom because they don't put trim back there. They put trim here on the outside. So a lot of times we'll get mice coming in behind the cabinets when the cabinets are installed. So I, I used that pest block foam um, and we did, I think it's by Great Stuff, and we, uh, I pest blocked all the, all the corners and all, every edge back there. Waste the can back there, trust me. That, that $8 you spent on that can, it, it, well worth it. And I pissed blocked in between the cabinets here because they, they were climbing up in between this little gap between this cabinet and that cabinet, the one with that like that, like that wide, if they can get their skull through it, they can get into it. And they will get into it. All right, so I'm gonna go in between the cabinet here. I'm going to put the countertop on. I um, want insect rat mice to be able to get in there. And I'm going to do the back. I want to go all around the perimeter of this cabinet. Another reason why I don't want to use adhesive for this is because if you ever need to remove this countertop, if you glue this, that wood to this wood, with like liquid nails or something you might as well take the whole thing out in one go because it is not going to come apart oops got some caulk bleed here we'll put some nice bead on there Oh. Also, so if you if you do if you do have to if you feel like you need to glue this thing, um, what you can do is you can um, you can use like a, a, a this where's the sanding sealer at? You can do a water based sanding sealer instead of oil on the bottom of it. Actually, if I had time, I think I probably would have put this water based sanding sealer on the bottom. The problem is you have to let it dry for it like, sit out in the sun and dry before you can use it. Um, but if you take and put sand and make, the sand and sealer on the bottom of the countertop, this wood countertops, um, and you use a glue, an adhesive that works with the with the count with the with the cabinet laminate plywood crap and the hardwood, it's got to work with the plywood crap, which is what the end panel is, and the hardwood uh, red oak hardwood, and it's got to work with whatever this whatever this is, which is kind of like a. Uh, when it dries, it leaves like a polyurethane kind of film on the bottom of it that you can sand and put and put poly on. But it's 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 water won't go through it easily. So that means that if you're using a water-based adhesive, it might not stick to it. It needs to stay on the back of it. It'll work with like a sanding sealer type uh, chemical and and these other two these other two substrates, which is why it's way easier. Honestly, this caulk, you'll be surprised at how, how well this caulk will hold something when it's in there by itself with no screws or anything on it. So I'm just going to caulk it and, um, and then I'm going to use mechanical fasteners to hold it here, here, in that corner, and in this corner here. All right. 
when you are when you are piloting this thing out, you can pilot it now, but you still got to pilot the countertop again. So you might have to do it twice. But you want to make sure your bit won't go all the way through the top of the countertop. Don't use a super long. Do the measurement to make sure your bit won't go all the way through this and through the top of the countertop because then you'll have a hole to fix. If you get two people to do this, it'll be a lot easier, let me tell you. Put it in the back, back first, and I want it to, it, it to sit down on this. I don't want it to move much after I put the. Make sure this is square to the wall. Still on the square to the wall. Good. That is square. Now we've done our measurement. We know this thing is not too long. Where it will go through both. Let's go ahead. And reverse thread. It's got threads in one, one direction. It's got a space and then threads here. It, uh, it pulls the piece in. When this pulls in, it grabs the work, the second work piece and pulls it together. And I think it's a T20. Before we get this other one in, we're gonna we're gonna check it one more time. Make sure we're not going back over here. Yeah, Three holes right in this spot here. 
think it was a, a child, one of the child things on here. Let me see. Yeah, it was think about this. It's got to be one of them. It's got to be one of these here. I think that was this one. Please withhold your fat jokes to a later date. All right. Now I can see right now that we have some gaps here. Big gap right there. And I need that whenever I put it on there, but the caulk will fill in a bunch of this and this. Uh, there's a little bit of gap from this corner to that corner. There's a, this, this cabinet kind of drops right here a little bit right in here. It's a good time to repurpose a lot of that caulk that you that you're going to get off of here. Go around and, and take your finger and run it down and get that excess caulk off. I'm taking the caulk and I'm just going to caulk in this uh, front piece here and I'll probably come along with some touch-up. I got some of this paint left over. I'll come around with some touch-up paint and then just paint that caulk. And caulk's white. So if you get down there, you'll be able to look and see the caulk. If I paint it the green color, it'll look perfect. Um, let's see. Your little wet, wet sponge. Ooh, how do we do I'm not going to do the caulk perfect right now. I'm just going to get the excess off. I'm going to move the excess to where I need more. Yep. And then I'm going to clean up most of it off of the paint. And then after after the, the countertop sets, after the countertop sets, we'll come back in later and do the final, the finished caulking on it, as you will, if you will. But if I'm going to put caulk in there now, it's just going to push and smoosh. I mainly want to get it off. 
off the countertop for sure. And watch, watch the caulk on your hands getting it up here. Otherwise, you might have to sand it. Might have to sand it off and refinish it. The fact that you used uh, you are the fact that I already oiled the bottom, the caulk doesn't want to stick to it very well. But we don't need it to stick to it. We just want it to seal that bond in between here, and I'm gonna come back to paint it later. I think I don't think I've, I've caught the face of some of these up here. This this little ridge around and then repaint it and then put like touch of paint on. But you can do that. So let's do the back section here. Make sure I get some. I don't have a bunch of stray caulk on your finger in this. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna attach it back here in this back section with a screw. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna take a piece of this tile here is uh, one grout thickness thicker than the standard standard tile. So we're gonna have this tile, and then this one here is gonna be in the middle. That's right, vertical. Um, but this one, if you look at it, this one here is about the thickness of um, this one is a, this one's a little thicker than that one so I'm going to use this one for my mark to simulate that this one has grout on the back of it I'm going to mark the countertop so our backsplash is going to come like so oops oh my that is barely covering it let me tell you it's barely going to be covered there. Um, so I'll know where I can screw it at. Let's mark it this direction because that's where I'm. That's so I can screw it right there. So I'm going to pilot the hole first. Actually, I need to I need to cut me a little recess. I'm going to use a flush drill bit here. It just cuts a little recess for me.
let's see if we hit anything here. I'm a little too far in that corner there. Yes, sir. Two dents right there. That piece of tile in there. Three dents. The one's really soft. I'm gonna do it right around the corner. Mark where my tile's gonna backslash is gonna be. Now I'm gonna go on here and I'm gonna caulk the back of this. I'm getting tile down on this thing, but I want to make sure bugs and other critters can't come up underneath this here. So I'm gonna run a bead of caulk around the back of it. How do we do that? Let's let's put some tape on it first. You cut the mess down. That stuff dried pretty fast too.
caulk around this corner and tape doesn't like wet surfaces I've found. Go the other direction. I'm using a Scotch delicate delicate surface tape number 2080. This stuff works great. It's just the right sticky. And if you want to put your if you want to tape a painted surface like this and you don't want it to damage it, stuff the bomb. Now, let's be prepared to use a buttload of caulk here. Good God Almighty. Big old water on the hand there. They said it would fix a caulk a half inch gap. We're going to definitely see if it'll get a, a quarter inch one. Alright, use the old fancy finger to go on here. And then put your excess. You put your excess caulk that you're pulling off in your gaps. And always excess. Yeah, now the purpose of this is just to seal the back of it from critters and insects and what have you. We hit it with a We hit with a spatula to get it nice and flat. My goodness. Do we have any extra? All right, let me get a spatula here. The reason why I use my fingers, I wanted to get it down, get pressure down in there. Make sure it goes out of my crap all in my face. 
I'm going to rinse it real quick. This gap is really big, like a half an inch at the, the max limit that you can actually, a, a half an inch or uh, 12 millimeters, like the max that you should theoretically be able to do with this caulk. You can always go back and do it a second time, do a second coat. Let it, let it sit overnight and get hard or whatever its hardening time is and then come back to it. All right, let's get this. So. And then inspect it for gaps. I don't see much going on here. This way. Oops, I'm tired of it. See, it went behind my thing there. Do this one more time. Let me get the excess off of here. Get a rag or something like that. Wipe the excess off. Alright, let's go over the first. Right, this ain't gotta be perfect. Oh, this is going to get oh, going to be a backsplash with, with glue, uh, eighth inch, there's going to be an eighth inch, eighth inch gap between the tile and this thing. Just don't get, just get all the big gobs off of there. you want to use a thin putty knife and a flexible flexible thin putty knife it doesn't need to be any wider than your tape don't don't use one that's wider than your tape otherwise you'll get caulk all over the place all right let's go along this way and go around all right there we go now let that soak out just manually go around and look and see if there's any big stuff on the walls that you need to get off. Now, here's the controversy. I'm going to pull this tape off now. Because I don't want this caulk to get hard. And then when I go to pull this tape off, I have a problem pulling it off. If you pull it off while it's wet, It'll be, it'll be, you don't have to worry about that. I don't remember which, which side of overlap there, but I'm, I'm going to start over here because it's easier. You pull it off. Ooh, ah.
you must put a second coat on this after it dries, then just re put more tape on it. Well, that's a little, that's not that much tape, and, and redo it. But I'm going to tape it again when I go to put the backsplash on. We're going to tape it down here. And that some of this is going to get filled in with the adhesive. If you're painting this, then you need to put a little more effort, obviously, into making this look good. But if you're not painting the wall behind the countertop and you're, you're putting backsplash, then it ain't got to be perfect. Now, now you want to go along and get all the big stuff up here. And the ugly stuff looks pretty good. Um, and when I come back tomorrow, um, one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to go along here and put me another bead of, a bead of caulk around this face here. And I don't need to do this side. This side's good. This one's good. But where this, where that cabinet kind of went down here, where this Lazy Susan was at, there's a nice size gap there. So i got to come back and put more caulk there. But uh, I'm going to let the caulk that's in there harden so when I, it'll give me a good base when I put the next one on. It won't take me long. There you go. Countertop is in, and next up on the schedule is going to be the backsplash. And we're going to bring you that video to um, install the backsplash. We're going to put the, the, the tile edges on. It's going to be a two stage tile. It's going to be a, a brick lay, and it's going to be a vertical layer, vertical row around, and then it's going to be another brick lay of a different tile. Two, so, two different tiles. The, the bottom tiles will be brick lay. Then that second tile is going to be vertical. Then uh, the next layer, the next two rows are going to be, so two rows of brick lay, tile one, vertical row of tile two, and then two rows of tile one, brick lay.